Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, check out what I've got in the shop. This 1999 Toyota Crown from Japan. It's right-hand drive, very hard to get on the lift, but that's all right. Under the hood, we've got the 1JZ, the VVTi, so it's kind of like a Supra. It's very welcome here. And today, we've got an issue with some warning lights on the instrument cluster. We've got the battery light, and we've got the rear tail light warning light. <laughs> let me show you what they look like and let me show you what I'm gonna do to diagnose them. All right, so let's start it up and see. We've got the battery light right here and then this is the rear tail light. Normally this is like a tail lamp failure sensor on a lot of other Toyotas of this vintage and I'm assuming it's the same for the crown. And now watch what happens when I step on the gas and rev up to 2000 RPM, both of those are gone. So this instantly indicates a charging system or an alternator issue to me. However, we should never assume. We're gonna go ahead and test this. Now the first thing we always wanna do before we start out with any battery testing or alternator testing is make sure that the battery is fully charged. So right now I've got my Schumacher charger on there. I'm using the 15 amp rapid charge. Just wanna get this charged up as quickly as possible. You can see I'm almost there. It just showed me that I was at 97. There it is, 97%. So we're almost there and we can almost begin testing. Another cool thing about, I love this, I love this type of battery. You've got a little indicator right here. So, I mean, we could do a visual inspection as well. We should never assume though that the battery is good. We always do want to test the battery, but check this out. We've got, okay, <laughs> add water and charging necessary. Now, let's take a look. So we can see that right now the battery does claim to be okay. So from a visual inspection without any fancy tools, we could say, all right, all right, the battery could be good, but once again, we're gonna go through the process together today. Nice, we are at 100% charge, so I'm gonna take this off and let's begin our testing. Now, the first thing I always do with older Toyotas, if you know, you know, we're just gonna make sure that these terminals are good and tight, and they are amazing. It's also never a bad idea to do a quick check of the fuses for the alternator. Now, in this case, obviously, we know that the alternator is charging a little bit, because as soon as I rev up, those lights go off, right? But still, but still, let's say the light doesn't go off. We're just going to use continuity mode on this fuse and just make sure that there is indeed continuity and the fuse isn't blown. If you don't have a multimeter or a voltmeter, you can also just physically remove the fuse and perform a visual inspection, hold it up to the light and make sure it's not blown. Now, let's test the battery. We're gonna put the battery under a load test. I like this tester because it actually does load the battery. It's got this crazy little coil in there. It actually gets kind of hot, so just you know, be careful when you're using this for professionals only people. But if you don't have one of these, you can go to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any auto parts store, should be able to test your battery for you for free. So let's try this and see if the battery passes a load test. Make sure those clamps are on there nice and tight. Okay, and now we're gonna apply a load and we're gonna watch. See right now it's already telling us the voltage here. Turn it on and we can see that it is absolutely testing in the green. And do you see there's a little bit of smoke coming off? That's because once again, we're loading the battery. There's coils inside of here loading the battery. Let's look at this a little bit closer so you can see right in the green here, it's gonna have the cold cranking amps. So in this case, it's 550 cold cranking amps for that battery. So I'm looking that the green is gonna be in between the 600 and 400 here as it was. And that way we know that under a load, this battery does test good. So we're starting with a good battery. That's very, very, very important. Also one thing to note, you're only gonna wanna test for a maximum of 10 seconds because once again, it does get hot. Also when you're done, I mean, I can touch this, but just, you know, just keep in mind, we're. We're actually applying a load here, people. So it is hot in there, it's gonna do work. So, all right, now that our battery's good, let's test the alternator. To test the alternator, we're gonna use this Schumacher BT55U. Super affordable, great to have around. This also tests the battery as well, but it doesn't put a load on the battery, but what it will do is it will also let you know if your alternator is charging within the specified voltage that it should be. One of these two little lights is gonna illuminate, either red for fail or green for pass. Super simple. So right now, fully charged, 12.84 volts. Fantastic, I'm, I'm loving this. All right, we can hear a little power steering pump noise. And we can see that the alternator is charging. However, it's only charging at 13.3, or oh, oh, it just crossed over to 13.4 volts. So right now it is passing, but it did start out failing. Now let's add some loads and see what happens. 
What do I mean by adding loads? Well, basically, I'm just gonna turn a bunch of things on that are gonna demand power from the battery and the alternator, and then we'll see how the charging is affected. I'm gonna turn on the lights. And already my charging voltage has gone down. Let's add some more loads. Ooh, let's turn on some defrosters. And let's turn on the wipers. All right. Whoa, not good. Not good at all. All right, so let's shut this off. You can see that right now our alternator is failing the test. Now, before we jump to conclusions and condemn the alternator too quickly, let's just go ahead and check the belt tension. Now, obviously we did not hear a slipping belt, but sometimes the belt is so loose that you can't even hear it slip. So we'll just inspect that real quick. Oh no, look at that belt. That belt, look, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that belt is fine. That belt is tight. Alrighty, well, let's check out the alternator. Before we touch the alternator, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery. Next, we've got that 12 millimeter nut underneath this little plastic cap that just pops right off. Okay, we're just gonna pull that wire off of there and then we've got this connector right here. And while we've got it here, let's just make sure all of our pins are good. There's no corrosion in there. I will check for voltage drop. And looking in here, you can see the tensioner right here. So there's our tensioner pulley. Oh, yes, oh. And this is one of my favorite Toyota wrenches. One side we got a 12, the other side we got a 14. I'm gonna use the 14 side, release that tension on the belt, pull the belt off so I can remove the alternator. And since we're playing on cheat mode here, I'm gonna get the other bolt from underneath. Just kidding, I'm actually not on cheat mode. I'm doing a full inspection of this vehicle anyway, so that includes putting the vehicle up in the air, checking all the hoses. Ooh, it's a little squishy, actually. And it's a good thing I did, because look, we can also see that we've got some crusties forming here on the radiator. This is very, very common. See those pink crusties? This radiator is failing. Also look up there, you can see the pink there on the radiator fins. So this is definitely something that's gonna have to be replaced. I'll take some pictures for the customer. So anyhow, what we've got going on right here, these transmission cooler lines are also bolted to the alternator, the bottom of the alternator here with this 10 millimeter bolt. And then on the other side of that, you can see we've got this 14 millimeter nut. So then this outer half comes off, set that aside. Now these lines, are free. So I'm gonna grab that 14 millimeter nut up there, set those aside, and then this should slide off. And then it's like a little freaking game wiggling this guy out of here. Whew. Now it is very, very warm, wow. All right, so what if you've got it out and you're inspecting it, but you still don't really feel good about your diagnosis? Well, we can actually take this to an auto parts store and have them test the output for us. So one last step before we buy a new one. Also, Faye, why are you removing it before you have a new one? Well, this is a Japanese model, so I just wanted to make sure that I was able to see the part number and order the correct one. And also, um, I believe this is the same for the 2J, so I already have quite a few of these in stock. So we're gonna take this to O'Reilly's together and just get this tested. Oh no! Yep. Oh, bummer! Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that this tutorial gave you the confidence and the skills that you need to accurately test your charging system and potentially condemn your alternator. I will see you in my next video. Bye! Are you done? Are you done messing with everybody's eggs now? Huh, Penny? Oh. Oh.